going to try and do this one quickly, which is going to be really freaking hard. Uh, mostly it is about this book, the works of Fumito Ueda. Um, I'm going to do some different stuff with this video, like with Blender, I think this time. So if there's things that pop up, then yeah, you know why that's sort of happening. Um, yeah, fun to test that stuff out. This, the book in general, just quickly, is really, really good. When it's at its best is when it explores the design themes and the art that um, Ico drew inspiration from and the art that has emerged since, particularly within the games field. Um, like, some of the, there's some really great examples, but Genova Chen and, you know, Journey is one that really comes to mind. The weak part about the book is it could really use some editing in some parts. Some of the stuff is like, it's great when it goes into these art discussions, but it gets a little broad at some points, but like, whatever. It is an amazing, amazing way to explore the just... What Fumito, Fumito, uh, Fumito Ueda does in games and the approach he takes to games is utterly inspiring and is definitely worth talking about. He's, it's not, you know, trying to make a game, all right? It is a exploration of a two-way medium and what can you convey in that two-way medium and, you know, how effectively can you convey it? What's the most effective way to convey it? It's, he's famous and every, I'll, I'll use whatever's in this book as a jumping off point for discussion. Um, so anyway, rec, if you're a game designer or you want to go a little bit deeper into games, I definitely recommend reading this book. In fact, if I get Blender working right... Yes. Um, famous for design by subtract subtraction. Taking away the superfluous things and focusing on the core thing that you're trying to convey. Really simple and, you know, a core principle of a lot of game development. Uh, but um, it just really needs to be uh, sorry, stressed that this was one of the hallmarks of that. And, like, I even remember when I was teaching at Deakin University, it got brought up. Um, designed by subtraction, no unnecessary NPCs, no unnecessary weapons, no weapon degradation, no health bars, no other UIs like that, um, extremely little. Create space so what is in that space gets given the attention that it deserves because by giving that attention, what is trying to be conveyed gets highlighted. There was going to be, there's great examples in there, like there was going to be, um, 45 Colossuses, I think, in the um, initial version of Shadow of the Colossus, but what's the point in repeating uh, a lot of these mechanics? Bring it back down so you're still just getting the core experience. Um, it's, how to put it, there's other parts like um, invisible walls, not wanting to break realism, so no invisible walls. When the character walks up to it, they stop. Like they'll hit, a, they'll hit a normal wall. There will be no such thing as a wall. There'll be a cliff that you can hit. There'll be an actual wall. But, you know, horizons, you know what I mean? It will go off forever. You won't see the end of it and you won't feel the end of it because of it. Um, and how about it? other things like Trico's eyes when they change color to tell you what Trico's mood is as opposed to telling you Trico is angry. Um, it's really cool and... Going in a little bit deeper, there's things like it talks about um, abstraction. Like, don't tell everybody everything. You don't need to tell everybody the whole lore of the game. That won't help their experience of it. Um, uh, if you leave things in space, like, um, what is it? Uh, probably something more like... Um, uh, so Duchirico obviously gets mentioned, the artist for this, but there's um, uh, Kadinsky also gets mentioned, um, but other artists like um, Edward Hopper um, uh, come to mind, ones whereby you have a chair, you know the utility and terry and purpose of a chair, but what is the specific function it's serving within that context? Is, is it in a waiting room are there other chairs missing? Why are they missing? Why is this one tilted and the other one's not? Giving you space to explore as opposed to an immersion through senses being thrown at you, an immersion that invites you into it, which, yeah, I mean, is as a designer, that's got to get you excited. Um, 
some of the other parts of the book that I thought were really cool was um, the music section. I definitely recommend if you're reading it, listening to some music. Well, well some music. Listening to uh, music from the games while uh, listening to it. That's really cool. Um, discusses art. So um, what I really liked is the discussion of high and low art and about how that's kind of relative. This is just one opinion that's brought across, but I think this is the one that really resonated with me the most. What's my high art and what's my low art will not be the same for you. And what I make is my high art might not be your high art. I'm glad this is going to be the Blender episode because I just ran out of space on my phone while I was doing that. Um, I thought that would happen. It hit four minutes. I was hoping to get it done under that. So since this is the Blender version of this, Star White, I guess just to finish off, what's really amazing about Fumito Ueda is what I said before at the start. It's about communicating and creating an experience where an author and the player are truly talking to each other. And that is one of the reasons why I design and I make games. And, you know, that's one of the reasons why I recommend playing any of his games or even if you want to read this book um, the works of Fumito Ueda a perspective on video games much recommended take care of yourself peace